Hey guys, this is a video on how to complete conquests the fastest and most efficient way. A uh, few things to get into. If you can't win on at least all-star difficulty, you might want to work on that first because losing games to the CPU and conquests can be very frustrating, especially for new players. It can slow you down a lot in conquests. It can make it a lot harder to take control of the map like this. So I would definitely recommend at least being able to win against the CPU on All-Star. Um, some other things. Uh, temper your expectations. This map will take about 7 hours if you do it in the most efficient way possible. Uh, for me, just to get to this point, it took about 4, 4.5 hours. Uh, I've played around 10 to 15 of the game so far. I have around 15 to 20 games left to play. Uh, it's it's probably going to take me at least two to three more hours at this rate. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get into how to make your map look like this map. So you start out at this, this square right here. This is where you start the game at. Uh, I don't know how many fans you start at. First thing you want to do, I would come down to the left, over to, the Rockies will attack you. You can take their stronghold. Once you take the Rockies, this whole area through here has nobody on it. Your focus for the next four or so rounds should be filling up that whole square so you can get reinforcements. The way reinforcements work is around for every two hexagons that you own, you get around about one reinforcement. So the name of the game early is taking as many free spaces without having to fight the CPU as possible. And if you can do that early, like, by the time I took the Rockies and the Diamondbacks and the Royal Stronghold, I was done. I was getting 20, 25 reinforcements per turn. Once you're to that point, uh, the rest of the map starts to look like this. So getting to that stage is very important. Uh, probably the second most important thing I can think of is borders. You gotta learn how the CPU plays borders. When one of your reinforcements border their reinforcements, they won't attack if uh, if you have one less or one more or the same amount of reinforcements. Like, say, this square that I'm on right now would be the CPU with four. This square I'm now on with two would be my square. The CPU would attack that square. That's how the CPU works. If you have two less than they have, they will attack you. So what I like to do is I like to take some of my reinforcements at the start of the round and fortify the borders. Like if I have one and they have two, I don't really worry about it. If I have one and they have three, you need to add one to two reinforcements on that or they will attack you and there's a decent chance they will take your space. And that's going to make your games last a lot longer. That's going to make you have some rivalries with certain teams. You don't really want that. The third and final thing I'll get into that will help you guys is you see how around all the CPU strongholds, I have more than five reinforcements. And that's basically barricading the CPU in. So you don't have to take all these spaces to do this, right? Like if... I had the whole left side of the map, right, and I had the Brewers, and I don't want to play them yet. I can just barricade them in their own thing. Um, I'm not quite sure how it works, but the CPU will choose one square to attack all the time to try to get out of your barricade. Um, so, okay, here we go. The Rangers is a good example of this. I have 11 on this because I have simmed it. I have lost that square in the past. I know that's the one they want to attack. So I have more than they will ever be. They have 15. The way the CPU works when they attack out their stronghold, they're not going to attack with all 15. I'm not sure how it works, but if you have five, they're not getting out. And if they do, they're only going to have one or two reinforcements. You can reinforce like this square and take it back early the next turn, maintaining map control. Um, but once you get to this point of the late game, you can see... I've got 30 here, I've got 30 here, I've got 57 in the top right that you can't see. Um, 
I mean, I can just go on a warpath and just wipe all the CPU strongholds whenever I want. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, the rewards are not that great. Um, you're looking at around 60 packs and like four balling is a habit packs. Um, and some mediocre diamonds and golds. Steve Finley's cool. Moz is not great. Jim Tom is not great. Eckersley's usable, but I wouldn't recommend doing the conquest for him. Uh, Trammel, probably not good. Nope, not good. Posada is alright. And then all these other ones are mediocre diamonds or a 5 or a 10-pack bundle. Uh, not a lot. Bobby is the reward for getting all of them. This card's awful. So, uh, all in all, is Conquest worth it? Not in my opinion, right? In those seven to nine hours it's going to take you to fill out the map, you could have done two ball players. You could have grinded two ball players from bronze to diamond. It takes about three to three and a half hours per ball player if you're super efficient with it and know how to do it. And you're getting a ton of XP that way, and you're getting at least probably 70,000 stubs per ball player that you do so I would say that's a better use of your time but if conquest is something you really want to do or you've been dreading it uh, it's a, it's an okay way to get the equivalent of around the 50 bundle and get some parallels and some reps in with players on your team so overall uh, would I recommend it no but if you want to do it this is the best way to do it uh, without playing a legend without doing anything like that uh, if you get to this point of the game, you can play on Rookie if you really want. So, uh, yeah, that's all, guys. Uh, if you found this helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. And uh, give me ideas that you want in the future. If you want settings, if you want hitting, if you want the Rodisho tutorial, I can do it. Just let me know. Peace.